All right, so we have some very exciting news today that I am thrilled to talk about. Xbox allegedly just struck a deal for an incredibly nostalgic sequel the fans have been begging for for more than a few decades. It's actually crazy that the wait has been this long. It really shouldn't have been. But according to the latest leak, fans finally, finally might have something to celebrate, or at least something to look forward to. Now, I think this is also kind of revealing in the sense of why didn't that happen before, which I'll get into here in a little bit, and then we'll also talk about a big PlayStation 5 exclusive that increasingly appears to be heading over to other platforms. So that's something else to be excited about, but let's just go and get right into the news, starting off with a new Marvel game. This is Marvel Rivals, a new free-to-play 6 versus 6 hero shooter, in the same vein as something like Overwatch. In fact, if you look at it, its art design and its maps uh, could flat out be mistaken for Overwatch. It's definitely wearing its inspiration on its sleeve, and I'll just kind of say that. You can kind of take that as you will. But instead of it being a first-person shooter, it's instead a third-person style of game. NetEase is the publisher, and they're working with a brand new internal studio that has some talent that previously worked on games like Call of Duty and Battlefield. So we'll see if that expertise can translate into a Marvel-based hero game. And if you do like Marvel, it is set to launch with 18 fan favorite characters. This includes Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Groot, the Hulk, Iron Man, Loki, Luna Snow, Magneto, and of course the ever-beloved Spider-Man as well as many more to come. It is set up as a live service game after all, so if it has any kind of success whatsoever, I imagine that the roster will grow exponentially in the future. However, for the time being, it doesn't yet have a release date, but it will have an alpha this May on PC. Right now, they're not saying too much when it comes to the console side of things, but I guess we'll just have to kind of see how all that plays out. If anything, I'll say there's definitely potential here just considering how beloved some of these characters are and, you know, some of the talent behind it. But at the end of the day, despite the characters, what we really need to see is whether or not it's a fun game to play. And currently, the jury's still out on that. I guess we'll just have to kind of wait to get our first taste this May. Uh, but let me know what you all think about this. I used to be a big fan of Overwatch. My wife actually still plays it, but I'm not really the biggest fan of Marvel. So this trailer doesn't really do too much for me personally. So I'll just kind of ask you all, especially for those that likes Marvel, how do you feel about a Marvel Rivals game that's similar to something like Overwatch? Are you excited about that concept and what they've shown or not? Now, we also got an update for another Crab's Treasure. It's now officially gone gold, which more or less means that its release date is basically set in stone. Unless something just completely unexpected happens, it will be out next month for Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC on April 25th. Even better here is that if you are an Xbox Game Pass subscriber, it is launching directly into Game Pass day one. You just gotta love it. And this is actually a game that I've had on my radar for quite some time. It's a really interesting take on a Souls-like game, uh, but in a completely different way than what we're used to seeing. It doesn't take itself overly serious. Instead, it's got this light-hearted tone to it, and it has a real sense of humor. I mean, even in this announcement, if you look at the fine print, it's, it's all tongue-in-cheek humor, which fits this game just absolutely perfect. They describe it as a shells-like, and if anything else, I think it's one of the more exciting independent games set for 2024, and I feel like right now, with all the turmoil that we've seen in gaming recently, I feel like we really need a good independent game. So hopefully next month when another Crab's Treasure releases on April 25th, hopefully it can deliver on that front. Okay, so continuing on with the great news, because it's been a fun day, and especially if you're a fan of Spyro. Yes, you heard that right, because according to a new leak, the often rumored Spyro 4 is in fact in development. This is coming from Canadian Guy A, which is one of the biggest content creators for Toys for Bob related games. He does a fantastic job at covering that type of content, and I will leave a link in the description below so you can watch his full video about this specific topic. I do highly, highly encourage that. But according to him, he said that he can quote unquote confirm that Spyro 4 as of March of 2024 is in early development. Now, that is the catch here, though. According to what he's heard, it just now started development in January. So with that news, the wait unfortunately will likely go for at least another three to five years. 
Even still, though, I mean, just simply hearing that a new Spyro the Dragon game is in development, I think that alone is pretty exciting as a longtime Spyro fan. I think that that is just incredible, incredible news. I mean, it's hard to believe this, but it's been 24 years since the release of Spyro 3. So to say the wait has been excruciatingly long is a little bit of an understatement. However, that is another part to this story, because why haven't we seen a Spyro 4 up to this point? I mean, it seems like Activision just never really gave this series the love and attention that it truly deserved. Now, to be fair, they used to try some new ideas with the Spyro series when they first acquired it, but they never really replicated the quality of the first three games, and it never really felt like we got that legitimate Spyro 4. And it really wasn't until their Crash and Spyro remakes that gave these franchises new life. Suddenly, with those remakes, Toys for Bob showcased a talent for these franchises, which was further proven with Crash 4 being another excellent and completely new game for the series. So it was at that point when it finally felt like Crash and Spyro had a real future. Toys for Bob can kind of take that mantle and bring these games into a more modern era of gaming. But that's also where I would kind of say that's where things got a little frustrating. I mean, Toys for Bob, after such a long, long wait, gave fans hope. And for as talented as they are, and as for as much promise as they've shown with these franchises, Activision rewarded them by shoehorning them onto the Call of Duty series as a support team. So, I mean, that's been a huge problem with Activision. They have kind of turned into this Call of Duty factory, and games like Crash and Spyro have been casualties to that process. We have seen less and less creative freedom with Activision over the last so many years because everybody's just kind of working on Call of Duty. So that's why this Toys for Bob departure, I believe, has been great news, and we're kind of seeing that here. They've once again regained that creative freedom by going independent, and as we learned earlier this week, they've already signed a contract with Xbox. And now, we understand why. Toys for Bob didn't just simply leave with no plan, they left with a desire to work on the IP that they love, being Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon. So because Xbox owns both the Spyro and Crash Bandicoot franchises, it seems like the two really wants to work closely together, allegedly on the next Spyro title. They need one another. Toys for Bob needs Xbox to work on these IP, and Xbox needs Toys for Bob because they want to continue the Spyro and Crash Bandicoot franchises. Both of these games will be great for their Xbox Game Pass content. Xbox Game Pass lives and dies off the consistent amount of content that it can offer alongside a wide variety of different games to play. And Crash Bandicoot and Spyro would be great additions to something like Xbox Game Pass. So, this, I think, is really a win for both parties. Toys for Bob will no longer have to worry about Activision looking over their shoulder. They're going to get to work on what they truly want to. And then Xbox, they get a major partnership out of this deal. And I imagine that this will be a close partnership for years to come as long as the two wants to work on these franchises. So there you go. After 24 long years, I'm happy to say, bring on Spyro 4. Now, we also got another update for Final Fantasy 16, and, I mean, this is happening. There's been a lot of speculation when it comes to this topic, but Square Enix is expressing every desire to port Final Fantasy 16 to more consoles. Now, a few days ago, Yoshi P first suggested that they want to port it to other quote-unquote platforms after it releases on PC, but even with that news that didn't get every fan to necessarily buy in, because apparently he said platforms and not consoles, so technically that might not necessarily mean Xbox or Nintendo. Well, about that. Yoshi P in another interview reiterated that desire, but this time he specifically said consoles. You can see his full statement here, which reads, while I can't give an exact date on when the PC version is coming out yet, the development and the optimization is moving smoothly. We should have a release date very soon. Once that's released, that's when we could start thinking about ports to other consoles as well. So, there it is once again. Square Enix absolutely is showing a desire to bring Final Fantasy 16 to more consoles. I don't think there's really much of an argument against this by this point. They absolutely are considering it. And if you're a Final Fantasy fan, 
I think this is great news because what this means is that Square Enix will have another opportunity to have more success. As a Final Fantasy fan, that's what you should want. I've said this before, and I'll just say it again. Being on Xbox, that's great. Growing their fan base on other platforms is a good thing for their future long-term investment in the Final Fantasy series. That's important for Final Fantasy's long-term future. But it's really Nintendo that I think Square Enix most needs. Here recently, we've seen this trend where Final Fantasy is declining in Japan. And that's not a great sign. And I think a lot of that really just kind of comes down to the simple fact that Japan is trending more towards handheld devices. Nintendo is absolutely dominating in Japan, and it's really not even close by this point. So if the Nintendo Switch successor is capable enough, and that, and that is the big question right now, how capable is the Switch 2? But if it is capable enough, then I think Square Enix needs to do everything that they possibly can do to get these games running on the Switch 2. Yes, there might be some sacrifices, but hopefully with NVIDIA DLSS technology combined with an upgraded Switch, hopefully it'll be acceptable enough and I think that that would be a big boost for Final Fantasy in Japan. To have these games on a popular handheld console, I think could do a lot for this series. I mean, if that doesn't happen, then hopefully PlayStation will have their own handheld in the future. That's been in the rumor mill for a while too. But either way, this is really great news. I think Final Fantasy 16 is a great game. Sure, not everybody likes its more action-driven direction, but I love the story. I still think it's a fun game, and I'm thrilled to hear that they do have plans to reach more players. Now, one last thing that I want to talk about here is Stellar Blade. This is launching exclusively on PlayStation next month on April 26th, and it looks like it has a lot of potential. It draws inspiration from Nier and Bayonetta, both of which are fantastic games. But at the end of the day, this is a new IP from a team that a lot of people just really aren't all that familiar with. So the question remains, is it just a looker or is it actually good? Well, the good news here is that you can see for yourself. A demo will be available on March 29th, and yes, your save data will carry over to the full release if you buy in. So definitely go check this game out. I think that I will as well because I've been pretty optimistic about this game since it was first announced as Project Eve years and years ago. Even back then, you could see the potential. And in fact, the gameplay that I'm showing on screen right now is very early gameplay footage before it was even titled Stellar Blade. This was back when it was known as Project Eve. And every time I put this gameplay on my channel, there's always a comment or two asking what this game is. And to me, that's very telling. People are interested in what they're seeing because, again, it looks like it's a lot of fun. So if you are interested, go and check out that demo on March 29th. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this video. For the time being, you Spyro fans can rejoice. But until next time, peace out.